Mold is something that we usually don't like at all. It spoils food and can cause serious health issues. But one of the biggest advances in modern medicine came from a mold called penicillium. I'm Science Mom. And I'm Math Dad. Today we're learning all about antibiotics. Hello and welcome. I see Owen and Reem. Hello, Tinley, Amira, Caitlin, Derek, Claire, Carter, and Will. We are happy to have you here with us today to learn about antibiotics. So antibiotics are amazing. They're kind of like this magic pill. They're not magic pills, but they are pretty common and they're very important for stopping infections. Before class, we asked if you knew somebody who had had antibiotics before to treat an infection and almost Everybody said yes in the chat. We use them a lot, but why do we use them? To understand that, it helps to go back and talk about medicine before we had antibiotics. So there was this thing called blood poisoning, which was fairly common. And when I say blood poisoning, I don't mean like there's poison that got injected into the blood. No, mm. this is what the term was for when someone had an infection in the blood. Ooh, sorry. So usually the infections don't get into the bloodstream? That's right. So bacteria are living inside you right now, and me too, in our intestinal tract. And bacteria in the intestines or in the mouth are fine. But if bacteria get into the bloodstream, that's the true inside of your body, and that is bad. Your blood is warm, there's lots of water, there's lots of sugar and food, the bacteria can grow very quickly and overwhelm, they can produce toxins and blood poisoning was something that could often be fatal. And how common do you think this was, Math Dad? Was this like only a few people in the hospital might get this, or was this a pretty common thing before antibiotics? Well, the picture seems to indicate a lot of sick people, but um, I would definitely say more common than it is now. It was much more common then than it is now. In fact, here is a poster from the early 1940s from the UK. And this poster is saying, beware Hitler's greatest ally. And then it says in the early part of World War II that more soldiers died from infections than anything else. Ooh, so the, the germs are the real bad guys. Yes, so infection before antibiotics, when bacteria got into the bloodstream and caused an infection, that was almost always deadly and very, very serious. But with antibiotics, we're able to treat bacterial infections. But how exactly did this come about? It's kind of a fun story. So if you want to pull out your notes, we'll fill this word block in real quick. In 1928, that's several decades before those posters that we just showed. Almost a hundred years ago. Alexander Fleming returned from a vacation and he saw a petri dish that had been accidentally left out and gotten contaminated with mold. So that's our next word block. Some mold had contaminated the Petri dish, and you can see that there is a little ring of space that doesn't have mold. Now let's highlight this real fast so you can see what's what. The light gray blotches, those are colonies of a Staphylococcus bacteria. Okay. And then this is the penicillium mold, and what was unusual here is he noticed that there was this ring here where there was no bacteria growing. Kind of like a force field around the penicillium? Yes. So the penicillium mold had created this area where it was like, all right, this is my Petri dish. Nobody's allowed right here. And the bacteria wasn't growing there. Hmm, that's a mystery. And he recognized that this was pretty remarkable. And he started investigating, so did several other scientists. And they were able to show that the mold was secreting a substance. It was making something that was then stopping the bacteria from growing. And this substance was? Penicillin. Penicillin. It was. It's named penicillin after the penicillium mold because that's the type of mold that they first isolated it from. Later scientists were able to discover the mechanism. They were just to, able to discover the exact way that this molecule was made and they could make it artificially, which was a lot easier because then you didn't have to have a whole bunch of mold to make penicillin. You could just make it yourself in a laboratory. And there are several different types of mold that can create penicillin. And it actually took quite a bit of research and trial and error to, in the beginning part to find one that you could make a treatment from. 
Wow. So it, it, we understand how it's making this force field. Yes, and we'll, we'll get to exactly how that's happening in just a minute, but it wasn't just a simple matter of, oh, I found some mold and this is curious. This cappy accident then leads to antibiotics being used a couple of years later. It actually took several decades before people were able to use antibiotics as a medicine. But 1928 was when penicillium was first discovered. And in the beginning part of World War II, that's when penicillin, they were able to make it enough of it to actually use in hospitals. And it was really seen as a miracle, a miracle drug. And you can see this old poster here, penicillin saves soldiers' lives. Unfortunately, way back when they didn't really realize how dangerous cigarettes were. So <laughs> poster shows the soldier smoking a cigarette, reading a magazine in bed. Not something you want to do when you're recovering in the hospital. But penicillin was amazing because it took so many things that used to be fatal and it made them curable. Ooh. So before antibiotics, tuberculosis, pneumonia, stepping on a nail or getting a deep cut, these were things that could lead to infections that were so severe the immune system couldn't handle them and it could lead to death. And all of these things that used to be often a cause of death went into this category of being rarely fatal because of antibiotics. So the antibiotic itself is fighting off these illnesses so the immune system doesn't have to? Yes. So when you have something like tuberculosis or bacterial pneumonia, an infection where bacteria have invaded the body, the bacteria are living cells just like you are made of living cells. Mm -hmm. But there's an important difference. The bacteria have a cell wall. Your cells don't. That's right. And this is the difference that penicillin attacks. Oh. So let's let's look at this little diagram right here. Sorry, what were you going to say, Matthew? I was thinking, at the beginning of the course, I was like, oh man, how come we don't have a cell wall? Does that mean we're weaker than plants? But you're telling me the cell wall here is the weakness. It's the difference that we're able to exploit. So in your cells, you have just a membrane, no cell wall, but a bacteria is going to have both a membrane and a cell wall. And this cell wall is made out of a very specific substance called peptidoglycan. And so if you have some other molecule that is going to basically attack peptidoglycan, is that gonna hurt you? No, because we don't have that cell wall. No, because you don't have peptidoglycan. But if you have a molecule that is going to come in here and totally destroy the peptidoglycan, is that going to hurt the bacteria? Yes. Yes. And it's not just going to get rid of the bacteria that's causing an infection. It will also kill the bacteria in your microbiome. Oh, because it's going to go throughout the whole body. Because it'll, it'll affect the entire body. So this is why if you're on antibiotics, oftentimes the doctor will say, we recommend that you eat some yogurt or some sauerkraut or kimchi. They'll recommend that you take a probiotic so that you replace those beneficial bacteria. Now let's look a little closer at how this works. So what are cell walls made of in bacteria? Uh, you said pe peptidoglycan? Peptidoglycan, that is right. And the peptidoglycan here has to be linked together. If it's not linked together, then it's not going to form the cell wall. It's, it's gonna just kind of fall apart. And there's a special enzyme called transpeptidase that does this linking and puts the pieces together. And it's working all the time because if you have bacteria, they're going to be growing and multiplying, making more copies of themselves. This enzyme is how they do that. But once you add penicillin, penicillin is like a little molecule that fits right into this little transpeptidase <laughs> and then it blocks it so that now it's like, ah, penicillin, I love you. I won't be doing any more walls while you're around. <laughs> and for us, this is good. For the bacteria, it's very bad because now you have this cell wall that is kind of coming undone uh -huh. and the bacteria just fall apart. Take that bacteria. So for the patient here, and great artwork here drawn by Math Dad, the infection is gone and everything is better because we've gotten rid of the dangerous bacteria. For the bacteria, it kind of looks like this. The bacteria is getting ready to divide and as it goes to divide, it's like, oh, can't make any more cell wall. Ah, 
and you end up having a whole bunch of cells that really don't have any cell walls and they can't live like that. They end up dying pretty quickly. So the cell wall is necessary because they had an inner membrane and an outer membrane, but that's not enough to... No, the, yeah, the cell wall is a necessary part of the bacteria. The bacteria can't function without its cell wall. So that is how penicillin works. There are different types of antibiotics, but they all work by targeting something that is specific to the bacteria, and a lot of them target the cell wall. Okay, so on that first slide where you showed us there was that region that was safe from any growth of bacteria, when Alexander Fleming first saw that, he wouldn't have known what was causing that. He knew it was a compound, something that was being made by the mold, and he was able to test it, and he tested it on several different strains of bacteria. Some bacteria, it would stop their growth immediately. Other bacteria were resistant. Hmm. Um, but he realized that there was potential for this to be used as medicine. Gotcha. So then only later did they first discover how it breaks down the cell wall. That's right. But using it as medicine was actually pretty tricky. Why? Because to get enough penicillin to treat an infection, you had to have a lot of mold. So much mold that it was difficult to grow that much mold. And so at first, they actually would, would produce penicillin in these huge incubation chambers, these big vats where they'd be trying to grow mold. But it was so expensive and so difficult to make even a small amount of penicillin that they used to save patients' urine Wait, so what? that they could recover the penicillin. I'm not making this up. This is true. So when you take <laughs> penicillin, when you take an antibiotic, your body recognizes that as being like, hey, what's this doing in the bloodstream? This is different. Let's just get rid of it. And it puts it into the urine so that it can pee it out and get rid of it, get, take it out of the body. Okay. But if you give someone penicillin and it took, you know, months and months to harvest all that penicillin and it's very rare, very expensive, and then it just gets peed out, you're like, well, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 we got we to gotta save that. <laughs> So you're able to, to reuse it. So they would collect the urine and then they would purify out and extract the penicillin so they could reuse it. That is not something that's done anymore because now we don't have to rely on mold. But in the 1940s, there was actually a huge worldwide search for the best variety of mold that would produce more penicillin and would grow better in these incubators. And they found it on a moldy cantaloupe at a farmer's market in Peoria, Illinois. And, and did this one worked it, better? It worked better. They were able to produce more. But now when we make penicillin, it's made synthetically in a laboratory. So they actually don't even need mold to make it. They can just put use chemistry to put the molecule together. It's a pretty small molecule. Isn't that crazy? Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, way cool. Now, a quick little test to see how well you've been listening. We're going to do the matching here and see Ooh. if you can tell which of these would be harmed by penicillin and which would not. Or if one of these was infecting you, could it be cured using penicillin or not? All right, I'm, I'm even gonna label these real quick, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So feel free to type in the chat the ones that penicillin would be able to stop. Yes, so okay. will, will penicillin damage the cell or would it stop an infection if you were infected with this organism? Okay, so this first one, we've got Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh oh, what's that one, science mom? We've that one about causes that. Lyme disease. <gasps> okay, so it has it's bacteria mm -hmm. and it has a cell wall made of peptidoglycan, which is exactly what we said penicillin would target. That's right. So penicillin would damage that cell. Up next, we have the Ebola virus. And the Ebola virus is a virus, so does it, it's not gonna have a cell wall, right? That is right. Uh -huh. If you are sick with a virus or someone you know is sick with a virus, sometimes people will go to a doctor and the doctor will say, you're sick with a virus, and they'll say, well, please give me an antibiotic. And sometimes doctors will give antibiotics when someone's sick with a virus. That is not a good idea. You should only take an antibiotic when you have a bacterial infection. Now, of course, sometimes you could have both. Sometimes you could have be sick from a virus and have a bacterial infection. But we'll talk more about why you don't want to take an antibiotic for a virus more next time in the next class. All right, C, we've got Staphylococcus. It's a bacteria that also has a cell wall made of peptidoglycan, and that's exactly yep. what... That is, and Ames and Noel and Cambria, everyone, lots of people are saying A and C. Okay, and what about D, though? It's a eukaryotic... Wait, amoeba? Yeah, an amoeba is not going to have a cell wall. Nope. 
Okay, so that means that penicillin is not going to affect it the same way? Yep. Aloe vera. Plants have cell walls. Plants do have cell walls, but they are not made out of peptidoglycan. They're made out of cellulose, so the penicillin is not going to hurt the plant. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Okay. And <laughs> F. Oh, also staphylococcus. Same bacteria as before, but this one has an enzyme that can digest penicillin. Ooh, so that means penicillin's not going to be effective against it. That's right. So if a bacteria has an enzyme that can break down the antibiotic, then the antibiotic is not going to be able to interfere with the bacteria's cell wall, and the bacteria will just keep on multiplying like regular, and that's what happens when you have a bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. And some bacteria are naturally going to be resistant to penicillin, but some bacteria can become resistant over time, and that's what we'll be talking about in the next class. And we have three factor fiction real fast. I bet you guys will have the answers to these just off the top of your tongue because we talked about them pretty recently. So well, Okay, well, you, yeah, you told us that the cantaloupe is what did indeed give us the best strain of penicillin. Yep, there was a moldy cantaloupe at a market and that's where they got the strain <laughs> that they used when they used to do it in big incubators. Now yeah. we don't grow mold in big, big incubators to make penicillin, now it's done in a lab. Hey, I just want everyone to know it's really hard to draw a cantaloupe with mold on it, okay? <laughs> math Dad did that drawing. It's a very good one. Good job, Math Dad. <laughs> Thanks. All right, to get enough penicillin, doctors used to collect the urine of patients. And, okay, crazy, but you said that this is fact. Yes. They, they actually wanted to reuse it because it was hard to make. It was, it was so hard to make initially before they found that good strain from the moldy cantaloupe and started making it in the big incubators. It was so rare, sometimes there were cases where they'd start treating someone with an antibiotic but then run out and not have any more and the infection would then come back. Um, fortunately now, we have lots of different antibiotics. There are more than 100 different varieties, in fact, of various versions of different antibiotics. Yes, yeah, so as yucky as that would be, if it would save your life, it would totally be worth it. Yep. All right, penicillin is becoming even more effective against bacteria over time and She's shaking her head. Mm, a, mm, mm, I saw in the mm, chat mm, people are saying fiction. All right, so they're not getting stronger over time? Medicine's not getting better? No, the bacteria are evolving to be resistant, and this is what we'll be talking about in the next class. Mm. But before we get to that topic, we have a under-the-scope mystery for you and then some poll questions. All right, so what are we looking at here? Under the microscope, type your answer in the chat. Let us know what you see. So it is a white-ish kind of plastic looking surface maybe. I'm seeing some guesses for... Do, 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 do. Tortilla. A tortilla, granite, a marshmallow, no, an I'm, egg. No, I'm hungry. <laughs> a cutting board, a marble, a countertop. Mm. Tile. These are great guesses. Lots look, of guesses it, for various types of plastic or granite or a counter. It does look like an egg. It is yeah. something round and spherical, so the egg guess is kind of spot on as well, but this round thing is used to play a game. It's a golf ball. A golf ball. So if, if you look at where the light is shining, you can th see. Th that's one of the dimples on the golf ball. So, oh. nicely done, and now head to itemfool.com slash sciencemom slash live and get ready to answer some poll questions. Today's the day, science mom. The day you get defeated, math dad. No, no, not that day. Right, in what year was penicillin discovered? Just type it in. It's not multiple choice. How well were you listening? Do you remember? Of course they don't remember. I bet they do, math dad. I'm gonna go crashing down. They're the unbeatable science kids for a reason. And look at how long that bar is already. Got me in the head. 13 people typing in the same answer. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got a good question here by Reem. Why did they name it blood poison if they weren't actually putting poison in the blood? Well, certain types of bacteria can actually produce toxins, and so the, the effect of blood poisoning when you have an infection in your bloodstream can be s similar to actually being poisoned if the bacteria are producing toxins in your bloodstream. Gotcha. Okay, revealing the answer to be 1928. Good job, everybody. So most of those were pretty good 
guesses, how many and, guessed Marmoset? And if your guess was in the 1940s, that is a pretty good guess as well because that's when we started using antibiotics. But it took a couple decades from that initial discovery and Alexander Fleming saying, hey, I think this could even be used to treat disease before people were actually using it to treat disease. But I should say, real fast, cool fact, in ancient Egypt, there were medical traditions of taking moldy bread and using it as a poultice on infections. Mm. And they didn't know, you know, what the molecular structure of penicillin was, but there were some old remedies that would actually rely on this oh. that people had discovered from trial and error. Oh, ancient Egyptians. Oh. Yeah. All right. How does penicillin fight off bacterial infections? So it slows down the metabolism of bacteria. It increases the temperature of cells to the point where they can't reproduce. It attacks the cell walls of bacteria, or it actively hunts down microbes that are harmful to the body and engulfs them. Hmm. Okay, science mom, we need to move the quiz to the beginning of class before you give all the answers away. Uh, th that's what I think. Okay, 54 votes, 56 votes for one. Kaladin disagrees with you. He's very proud of how well the science kids are doing with learning. Cheering for the wrong team, Kaladin. All right. Correct answer here is that it's attacking the, the cell walls of bacteria, and it's that's super cool because we don't have cell walls, so we're not going to be directly the, affected here. Yeah, the side effects of a lot of antibiotics are fairly minimal because the, the main thing that you worry about with side effects for a lot of these is them wiping out the microbiome, but their effect on a human cell is pretty small because we don't have cell walls. But there are lots of different types of antibiotics and some definitely have more severe side effects than others. And not all of them attack peptidoglycase. There are different, different types. True or false, penicillin only affects harmful bacteria. Hmm. You couldn't get in front of these lights, and then I think your eyes just kind of closed, Kaladin. Well, he was asleep, and I just picked him up. He's a very good sport. He's taking a nap, and then I pick him up, and I hold him in front of light, bright lights, and hmm. he's a good puppy. So if you eat moldy bread, will that make you healthier, Science Mom? Eating moldy bread is not a good idea, no. So that was a no? Yeah, so just, no. Just for no. the record, okay. No, don't eat moldy bread. <laughs> And it would taste awful. Yes. And although ancient Egyptians used to have that tradition of making a poultice out of moldy bread, that would not be a very safe way to treat an infection because you could grow the wrong strain of mold and introduce some toxins instead. All right. The chat is saying false here, and that is the correct answer. So penicillin is going to affect lots of bacteria, and we talked about how it might wipe out all the good bacteria in your tummy. All right. True or false, there are over 100 different types of antibiotics. And Rebecca has a great question. What if someone is allergic to penicillin? There are, just like with any other small foreign molecule that is introduced into the body, it's possible to develop an allergic reaction. So that, that would just mean that our body's immune, our immune system is recognizing the antigen on the penicillin in yeah. this case, so, and then creating antibodies mm -hmm. against it. Penicillin is a very small molecule, and for some people, their body will create antibodies against penicillin, and then they're allergic to it. If someone is allergic to penicillin, there are other antibiotics that can be used to treat an infection if they have an infection, but that is, that is what happens when someone has an allergy to penicillin. Hey, wait a minute. So the, the mold, the, the original mold, the penicillium mold, it's secreting this, but does the, is it immune to penicillin? This penicillium mold? Yeah, so the, the mold does not have a cell wall made of peptidoglycan. The mold has a cell wall made of chitin. Oh. And so it's, it's sort of like, um, it's like a war between the mold and the fungus. Several types of mold have decided, you know what, I usually grow where bacteria are, and they have developed chemical weapons to get rid of the bacteria so they can grow better. Oh, that's way cool. And I said war between mold and fungus. I meant to say war between mold and bacteria. Mold and bacteria, yeah. Yep. Okay, and... All right, they got this one right. It, it's true. O over a hundred different types. Uh, no, I can't name them all, but 
um, some more effective than others, and they're not all used to treat the same type of bacteria. Uh, uh, yeah, diseases, D diseases. Ex or infections, exactly. And there, there are a limited number. The antibiotics we've discovered, we're discovering fewer and fewer each year. Mm. Okay, my last chance to stump everyone today. Select each true statement. Stepping on a nail could be fatal without antibiotics. Blood poisoning is the medical term for when someone injects poison through a syringe. Antibiotics are especially effective against viral infections. And penicillin is deadly to plants. Hmm. You're jump starting him, getting him to eat. Yep. He'll go all day without eating and then He'll wait for science mom to feed him out of her hand, and then, <laughs> then he'll decide, oh, okay, fine, I, I actually am hungry, I will eat. It's kind of a running joke, that though, that he, he has to be jump-started. He, he, oh, he, he might, he might just funny. go hungry all day, or all week, if we don't feed him out of our hands. Well, yeah, if, if you don't feed him by hand to get him jump-started, he'll wait all day before he eats his food, but if you give him a couple kibbles by hand, then he'll eat the whole bowl. Mm. Kind of funny. He's a funny dog, though. Okay, we have 67 votes for one thing, and Good it job. is the only correct answer that there. That is the only correct one. So, that's, that's kind of crazy that you could die if you stepped on a nail without antibiotics. Could that happen today if someone stepped on a nail and, didn't, and had no access to antibiotics? So could they really die? Stepping on a nail is a particularly bad injury just because it can put bacteria up so deep into the foot, and then the blood circulation through the foot is not as high as other areas of the body, and if it does, you're not able to clean it out well, the chance of infection is higher for an injury like that. Um, and back before antibiotics, that was, that was something that could get pretty serious. Whereas today with antibiotics, most people don't worry that that's going to be a fatal injury. No, I'm sure glad for them. And blood poisoning is just a term for any infection that gets into the bloodstream? That's right. All right. Well, science mom, they came out uh, five out of five. Good job, so unbeatable will, science kids. I will concede that they, they won this one. Um, For their victory math, Dad, they actually had kind of a funny suggestion. They said that you should try a citrus fruit that we typically don't eat um, plain, but they thought you might like it. Here's a, a slice of lemon, a peeled lemon. They're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you like sour things, right? Mmm, delicious. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed learning about antibiotics, and in the next lesson we'll talk a little bit about antibiotic resistance and why it is that using antibiotics too much can cause a problem. Work hard, grow smart, and we'll see you next time.